one of the main initiatives in Google.org is something called RE less than C, which is renewable energy cheaper than coal. You guys think you can find some sort of um, energy that could be cheaper than coal and as well viable in, say, one decade, 10 years? Yeah, I mean, the goal is for us to be able to produce some renewable energy. I think that, to your question, that Google's not going to have the final answer to any of this. We're not going to all of a sudden have the magic bullet that Google thought of, of it, thought of and nobody else has done it, but we think that we can contribute to this field. Google.org, what makes it a little different than venture is that since it's a philanthropic investment, it's sort of, there is more potential to do high-risk investments than a, film, than a typical VC might be willing to do. One of the technologies, for example, that we're really interested in is something called enhanced geothermal systems. And the idea here is essentially there's all this hot rock that's right below our feet. And so you drill down, capture the heat by essentially injecting water which produces steam, which rises, and then that powers a turbine, and you can produce energy that way. So it's really new. It's kind of an exciting technology that has a potential to be a really big deal, but it needs m money at this stage for more research and development, so we've put, put some money into that technology. Is, uh, is that core part of the company still focused on data and uh, search and making data available, whatever it is, and making things easier for people in the world? or? Uh, this equation is becoming also um, green. <laughs> yeah, the I core mean, of Google is is very much search and is very much trying to provide the best search for for our users and making that fast. And I think that's something that in the operations of building the operations to power Google that the green efforts play into it and there are business reasons and there are environmental reasons for it. If we're able to actually reduce the energy that we use then that's better for the environment, which makes a lot of people here very happy because we're keenly interested in that. And it also makes a lot of business sense because it's a lot of less money that we have to put into energy costs. So that's a huge savings for Google. So there are different data centers around the world that are basically uh, server farms that run a lot of the infrastructure for how Google works. And there's a lot, a lot of effort that's put into cutting back the amount of energy that's used into working into making sure those data centers are as efficient as possible. And it's actually great because the data centers that we've built, we actually think we have the most efficient data centers in the world. A typical data center for every unit of power that goes to the actual computing, there's another unit of power that goes into all of the overheads, so that's all the cooling and everything. For some of the Google designed data centers, for every unit of power that goes to the computing, there's just 0.16 units of power that goes into all of the overhead. So they're really try trying to do as much as possible to make sure that those data centers are as efficient as possible. At one point, was there some, some misinformation going around about what it takes for one search? Yeah. That's right. So there is there is misinformation about the the amount of energy that it uses to power a, a Google search on our end, and you know it was widely spread around. It ended up to be completely false. It was based on a professor's paper, who the professor then came out and said, "Oh no, 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 that's completely inaccurate. I'm not talking about Google. I'm talking about something else." So the misinformation was that it, every two Google searches, it was the same amount of energy as. Uh, boiling a kettle of tea, something like that, which was really incredibly inaccurate. In reality, with the way that it works is the energy that your personal computer uses when you're using Google uh, to search for something, it's actually going to use more energy than we're going to use on the Google Zen to power that search. And it ends up that um, it's something to the effect of doing 15,000 Google searches. The energy that goes into that is the same energy that goes into the production of one cheeseburger. There are several thousand Google searches that it takes for the energy to equal one load of, of wash. So the, a lot of the numbers are really inflated. But it's certainly, you know, it speaks to a point that it's like, n by no means is it secret that Google uses energy. I mean, that's certainly, it is a big expense, and that's why we're really interested in making sure that our data centers are really efficient. We have a fleet of cars on campus that, as an employee, you're allowed to sign out, and eight of the cars are these, are. Priuses that we've converted into plug-in cars. We are really interested in, in your open source efforts, data centers, cooling systems and things. Are you guys sharing information about things that could actually not only improve conditions at Google, but other companies, governments? Is open source related to all that or not? Yeah, I mean, I think that as much as possible, we try to, you know, try to make things in open systems. That way, people can 
innovate on our products. We actually, a couple months ago, um, published a number of tips of here's how we've saved a lot of energy in our data centers. So here are a number of things. Certainly we don't give away every single secret because that's a big competitive advantage for Google, but Google has said here are a number of things that the industry should really think about and should look at. And it made a huge splash within this industry. So that's something that you're reading on the front page of the New York Times because it's incredibly difficult to understand. I understand a very small percentage of it, but in this community it made big waves and how the batteries were hooked up to the, you know, as backups for the servers and this and that. Could you talk a little bit about the Climate Savers Initiative? I just read that Google was really insistent in the fact that computers have improved in the last years tremendously, but somehow the DC power that comes with them is still primitive. Uh, so say when you plug a computer, um, you waste a lot of energy in heat. Are you trying to improve uh, ways machines work in general? Right, so personal computers do use a fair bit of energy. And so we've teamed up with a number of companies, Intel's one of them, and made this coalition called Climate Savers Computing Initiative. A lot of it is actually work to, to get people to become aware of of energy saving tools that are on their computer. A lot of computers when they arrive don't necessarily have the energy saving tools enabled and so it's important that people go on their computer and make sure that if your computer is idle for a couple minutes that it actually goes to sleep. So there's efforts like that and there are efforts to work with computer companies to make sure that these systems are on the computers, that the energy saving parts of it are on the computers and that we think that if that's able to succeed, that that's one nice way that we can very easily, without it affecting anybody's life, cut back on a lot of energy use. Do you think open information would be also good for uh, Google's accountability in the sense that you are so important as a, one of the big companies in the internet? Do you think o open information about uh, what's your actual footprint could make your affairs even more accountable and even more credible into in, 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 in the whole world? Yeah, I think, I think that's actually a really good question because we think that at Google we're trying to make sure that our footprint is as small as possible and we actually use carbon offsets to um, counteract any carbon emissions that we have. And there's a team that works really hard on making sure that those carbon offsets are high quality, that they're additional projects. So and we think that's great and that's something that we decided as a responsible company we want to do. But at the same time, you realize, all right, that's going to take care of our small piece of the world. If Google, you know, all of a sudden got up and left the world right now and all the operations ceased to exist, it probably wouldn't make really a huge difference in terms of the overall climate issue. So what we've done instead, in addition to the carbon offsets, is try to figure out how can we actually make change in a big way. And that's where the projects like RE Less Than C come in. So we say, okay, if we can actually make change this way, that actually might make a huge difference in the world. Um, or Google Power Meter is another example of that.